and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech world leading towards the singularity and also some hive mind stuff. I'm Beardy McGee. I'm Mc Beardy Mc... You're not, you don't have a beard, that doesn't work. Face. <laughs> person. Yeah. Take it, English <laughs> yeah. language. Yeah! <laughs> what did that ever do to us? God. <laughs> what? We've got a pretty good one this week. We're going to actually go through the Hive AI and actually uh, talk about all the ones there. We haven't actually well, looked at it all, but haven't uh, actually discussed what we're going to say. We haven't actually totally promoted Hive AI a lot. No, no. There's not a lot on there. There's, there's a few people that are posting really cool stuff. I'm going to start just That's posting good. more though. That's good. I'm going to start putting it out. Anyway, um, my first story is about a guy getting an amputeed hand. That's one from there. Uh, sharing information corrupts the wisdom of the crowd. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to talk about my new hat. Uh, <laughs> and then also... It's a, pro to... it's a prominent news story. It is a prominent news story. And my flower. Uh, and then also uh, Bitcoin. Just We're just going to go and talk about Bitcoin just again quickly. Just as a brief thing. And then uh, David Brin on the path to positive Suzevalence. 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 I like that. Or Suze. Yeah, I think it's Suze. Cool. He's going first. Um, I'll do my little hand one first. Because this guy, <laughs> little hand. a little hand one. This guy is freaking hectic. Did you watch this video? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, this video. So yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, this is incredible. It's so, very uh, Star Warsy. It is. He's he's a twenty four year old like Austrian, and uh, he got his hand uh, amputated or dysfunctional hand amputated when he lost it. Freaking work. hipster in his iPad. Yeah, that's right. God, yeah, so lame. <laughs> Who cares? It's a piece I of mean, machinery. Sorry. It's tech. Continue. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's getting insecure. You should hold up so everyone can see the Apple logo. <gasps> Magical. Wow. No, no, no. I'll put, I'll put the thing on so I can't see. <laughs> anyway, you're interrupting this story. The, int the story is about this dude who's like a fucking Terminator. And he's awesome. Um, I'm just really, really impressed by about how well this actually works. Like, I mean, if you check out the video, I won't play it here, obviously, but yeah, you can actually just see how, how good it's actually become. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think does, it, does it actually it links up to muscle? I think so. I'm like not sure. Neural like nerves. It's not. Well, he thinks about it and it doesn't. So it's, it's not like he's got a yeah. thing in his other hand that's controlling it. Really cool thing. When he twists his head like that, it just keeps on going round and round and round. <laughs> <laughs> you could do like you know evil just robots. Freak people out. Yeah, exactly. Go to shake their hands. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I just love like this is an incremental thing. It's not like you know a big world changing event, but just the video is really cool and it's nice to see exactly where they're up to. I mean, this is always something you speak about when you think about the future. It's just you know, getting towards that, uh, the Star Wars hand. Yeah. Luke Skywalker's hand. It's yeah, exactly. Well, just a, a perfect replacement. Yeah. But and then, of course, well, no, a perfect replacement. The, the, like, the, the interesting thing with this is he had he uh, voluntarily amputated his hand. Like, yeah. it was a fucked up hand. It wasn't working for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he decided but to he remove it. had it voluntarily amputated to add this onto it. Yeah. That's kind of... <laughs> it's just fantastic. fantastic. I don't know. I, I can't. I, I kind of. You can't predict exactly how fast it's going or where it'll go. I, I don't think there's any trends or curves. It probably is one there, but <laughs> it's not. It's jumping out. You probably just like line up all the the tech as it goes over. Yeah. Because it's gone through history with all the pictures of what the hands could do and. Yeah. Back from like you know stumps to hooks <laughs> to. <laughs> True. Things that just go up and down. So do you think you'd ever um, you'd ever cut off your hand and replace it if there was a better one? Yep. You would. Fuck yeah. Okay, fair enough. See, I don't think I would. I'd wait for others to do it first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to be the first one to step yeah. up to the plate and be like, yep, sounds good, put me in. Yeah. I'd really have to wait for it to be some freaking amazing thing. Like, you know, it's speed at, it's speed at like, you know, shaking salt is just really crazy. And then I might consider doing it. <laughs> shaking salt? Shaking salt. It's called a euphemism. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 Yep. I wonder if he has. <laughs> oh, there we go. That brings a whole new meaning to it. Malfunctions. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it's the most common problem. Anyway, we. Yeah, go on to the next. Story one. is just going in wrong directions. Mm -hmm. um, sharing information corrupts wisdom of the crowds. So we've all heard about the wisdom of the crowds, kind of economic type. Mm -hmm. What would you call it? Method paradigm thing. Sure. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Yeah. Or something. Where if you get a whole bunch of group, a uh, whole, whole group of individual, individuals with different opinions and different kind of kind of ideas, mm. get them all together, you'll generally, and if they all form a consensus, you'll generally come up with like a more accurate opinion or idea or factoid or something. In other like words, that. crowds are smart. Well, yeah. they can be. Crowds are smart. But well, what these guys did, and they don't really provide much evidence, but they got like 144 students and they just um, sat them down in isolated cubicles and asked them a few questions about like you know. 
guess what you know Switzerland's population density is and some other things like that. Um, and that that'll that'll work, and they found yeah yeah you know combine all those groups together on average, you get kind of a rough average that's more accurate than any individual could do. Mm -hmm. But then what they did is they told a few of them what the other what some other people predicted. Oh, okay. So they threw social social influence into the mix. Yeah yeah. And then that completely skewed all the answers. Like they didn't end Possibly up with, or negatively. Negatively, they they came up with like there was no wisdom wisdom then. So by actually implementing or I introducing social influence into hive minds into groups yeah. you actually skew the information into a non-accurate sort of by having so kind of like experts were they told that there was a really good like information or was it just in random they don't tell you they basically they just said that they told some people yeah what other people said because if it was totally random i could understand that because then they wouldn't even be an expert opinion because it's you know could be someone who's really crap, but and then it's presented as an expert. Yeah, but if they said this person's an expert, here's what they chose, then it's yeah. likely to influence what people would. Yeah, exactly. But if they're not actually an expert, then yeah. it could totally screw up the whole. But the see, whole when graph. you apply this, if if this is true, and if you apply this to, like, say, Facebook, for example, mm. and all the social influences in there, if there's someone who, like, and there must be people, it's just we can't really measure and identify them too much yet, but I'm sure you can with some tools. There must be people like social influences in each of our group networks. And if they say information is true, then you're likely to repeat that information. Yeah. Whether or not it's, you know, actually true. Like it could be false information you're just repeating. And then if everyone starts repeating that false information, the social influencer says, you know, this is legit, then you don't end up with any wisdom in the crowd. You end up with like, yeah, one person controlling well, what the crowd thinks. the crowd thinks. again. Because that, I mean, that, that kind of get, goes across from the whole idea of the crowd is like, you know, having all the experts there. I mean, I guess the whole thing of the wisdom of the crowds is that people who do know what they're doing can be a little bit more like, hey, no, no, let's do this, let's do this. But well, maybe you need transparency to have wisdom of yeah. the crowds, which is my next article. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I like that one. I'd, I'd really like to see more info on that, hey? Yeah, there must be, like... That's just why... There must be a paper somewhere. Well, yeah, that sounds like they're referencing one. Oh, I saw a really cool paper the other day, just a little bit of an aside. Mm. A really great paper that actually did the theoretical, theoretical limit of computation in the universe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Going down to like you know the very base level of like you know just saying like atoms are going through and they just did it for everything around like what is the theoretical maximum computational speed and all that. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just a fantastic paper. Know. I'll have to find it and put it yeah. in the links and stuff because it was just really good. It was like it was yeah it was good. The abstract was kind of awesome and then they started talking really formal. You know it's like. Right. Right. Has anyone made a, <laughs> a site for actually explaining scientific papers really simply? There's the ones for sharing papers. Yeah. Um, I forget what it's called. Because, like, the, that's... I swear there must be an issue there somewhere. Because mm. people put out papers and then, like, maybe one or two people actually read it, then create journal, like, blog articles yeah. and create news articles, which never reference the actual... You link back to the actual paper, and it's... You're just going off their word, really. Well, I think the big problem you're is that, um, it. Because you still have to pay for a lot of journals. But well, then I think there's also the technical kind of... Um, what's the word? Specialization. Yeah. Like... <sighs> I'm sure so many scientific papers you just wouldn't have any clue what they're talking oh, about because they're so specialised and they're one particular. Oh, well, they are. Like you really feel it's like. Yeah. But anyway, if, if you guys know like about how that works for a really good program for a forum for actually talking about these papers, please let us know. That'd be really good. Yeah. Because there's been a few, but it's hard, especially when not specialised in. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. We're not scientists. Not scientists. We don't know. <laughs> just specialised in the field. But it's um Bitcoin. What are you talking about Bitcoin? Oh, just an update on how it's been going. Because we spoke about it about maybe a month and a bit ago. And the price has skyrocketed. Yeah, the price has just gone absolutely crazy since Nine we spoke about it. Bitcoin, so is it? what is it now? Uh, it's now at seven dollars. It had a bit of a, a bit of a drop afterwards. Just sold at nine. Uh, yeah. When did you sell Tris? When when did you sell yours? Um, I sold at ten. That's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah, 10, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not not a dollar sixty. Not a dollar sixty, no. No, okay. I didn't sell a lot of them there, but anyway, the reason I wanted to speak about it is just it's been really interesting following it and just seeing how all like you know the different tech places around have been uh, actually reacting to it and going through. There was a big article on Reddit recently that had about fifteen hundred comments on it. Mm. Um, it was about like it was the most dangerous system ever created, and oh, right. <laughs> it was great like saying about how it's you know going to replace everything and going through. And it's just been really interesting actually following the forums and seeing just how much this has actually started to grow and go crazy. So I think that's what inspired the, the price rise because there, there was a massive price rise of about maybe 800% or so over about a week. Um, that's where it got up to $9. So it was just it went repeating all around the web and everyone's saying, oh my God, Bitcoin is going to be crazy. 
but what I found is really interesting, the idea that more, uh, more and more people are actually talking about, you know, just permanently holding on to the coins, because uh, you know how we spoke before and saying there's only going to be 21 million? So rather than gonna, doing, yeah, they're will, just going to sit on it. Will that inflate to massively higher prices? Yeah, well, see, that, that's probably doing it a lot now, because the actual economic transactions with Bitcoins haven't increased that much. So yeah. it's a massive well, bubble. Because you're, you're, still, you're still getting the same, with our mining, you're still getting the same amount of... Roughly, it's coins. a little bit slower. Oh, because so, difficulty increased by 50%, so I'm getting 50% less, right. and then it's a little bit there, yeah. But the, but we, we were speculating before that um, it's not so much the mining, like, more, not more, people haven't started mining more, they've just started no. actually buying it. Yeah, and to sit on it. Because uh, a lot of people, they're actually saying a lot of the um, underground places have really started to use this. A lot of drug trading, a lot of all of, like, you know, the nefarious stuff. Mm. Bitcoins have kind of become the thing of a choice. What the uh, mafias have got into it yet? Yeah. Like the Russian mafia and the British mafia. And... Well, see, it's still too volatile. They really need to, like, you know, balance out the price of it, and then it can start going well. But just seeing, like, the amount of drug trading that's actually happening on there is a <laughs> little bit ridiculous. Yeah, half of it's Tristan's work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm big there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 worth watching. Maybe um, set up a, a mining rig if you have a good computer or something. I'm, I'm averaging, if I get my computer going 24 hours a day, uh, around $10 a day. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> um, for doing nothing. For doing nothing. So that's kind of cool. But again, just watching it, like, I don't know. I'm thinking even if this does take off, I don't think I want to sell my Bitcoins. I think I just want to hold on to them for a long period and see what happens. Right. Just a fantastic experiment. Let me check out the form. It's really good. Cool. Anyway, that's enough about Bitcoin. Okay. Brief update. Uh, my one is a H Plus magazine kind of interview between uh, David Brin, who is the author of The Transparent Society, which he wrote, I think, 13 years ago. I'm guessing he's written a few other books since. I haven't really heard of this guy. Um, and then Ben uh, Goetzel, who's the kind of AI guru for the last couple of years. Um, really, really cool, interesting thing. It's I'm really not going to remember everything they've said in here because it's <laughs> massively long interview. But... Um, it's this idea that maybe a few of you have already heard of um, called surveillance, as they've termed it. So rather than, like, surveillance is kind of like a top-down, like, you know, the elites monitoring the masses type thing. Mm. Whereas surveillance is everyone monitoring everyone. Kind of like the panopticon type thing. The, the there was a jail that where um, everyone uh, could yeah. see what everyone else was doing. Or there was a guard tower in the centre and the guards could see everyone, but they weren't always looking. But still top-down. I think so, yeah. But then prisoners could see a lot of problems. This is the idea that, like, you know, I can yeah. monitor you, you can monitor me, yeah. they can monitor us, we can monitor them. Well, why is it called Sue's Valence? Um, Sue's is under, so is over. Oh, okay. So under surveillance. Like French. Ah, okay. Yeah, so under surveillance, over surveillance. Yeah. Under surveillance. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, the interesting thing is, uh, they're talking about also Steve Mann, who is one of the kind of proponents of live vlogging. He mm -hmm. started actually uh, recording his life back in the 80s like 24 hours a day and he's got the crazy like radio headsets with the bunny ears and stuff just to transmit the signal it's really <laughs> awesome um, but the big thing they're really talking about is kind of the idea of like okay say surveillance surveillance happens and this is kind of happening now it's you know they're getting all these privacy concerns and we've always been saying that we're going to just be sharing more and more and more about each other Yeah. and so this trend is kind of inevitable it's going to happen eventually so these guys are talking about okay what does that mean for society what does that mean for the individual what does that mean for you know, how the world operates. Yeah. Um, and oh, if I can find, if I can remember the big point. The big point is, <laughs> so the younger generation is already kind of on this, this kind of level of like, yeah, we'll just share out anything and it'll be, it'll be cool. I, I disagree a little bit with that. I'd say no. we're sharing more than the older generation, but I think like the generation coming out are going to, like, I mean, there are still some things that we don't share. True. We, we, we only share very tiny amounts of, about our lives. Yeah, at the moment, but that's obviously going to increase more and more. And I think it'll be our kids or... Um, yeah, they'll feel... Like yeah. And uh, the big thing they've actually been pushing is that uh, as this goes more and more, there'll kind of be like a social restructuring of what is um, surveillance right. on other people and what is privacy and what is, you know, information you can use against each other and stuff like that. Yeah. So, for example... Um, oh, what are they saying? Man, I, my memory sucks. <laughs> um, so that's why you need to just share everything you ever read, and then it'll just be like, oh, no, no, you're talking about this. Yeah, it's just, I need a yeah. computer to prompt me to remind me what I've read. <laughs> just give me, just give me an auto cue so I can just read my life out. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, they're saying, uh, okay, hang on, I had it for a second. Right. 
Well, I'll just talk um, about this the other thing that we were, think, were talking a little bit about you know, today, I read a bit. Um, which was the idea of a, kind of doing like a, a business model or actually sharing it where you actually uh, just share everything, absolutely everything that you're doing, like say all your financials, every, any bit of money that comes in, you just share and open it. Um, say with any marketing material you have, like, you know, totally sharing that, totally opening that up, just sharing everything from that perspective and trying to create a business, uh, like making your business totally transparent. So that would be very interesting, especially in like, you know, a local community with a, where you know how all the businesses are operating, because then you can just have a quick look, see how they're promoting, and then just give them ideas, give them like, you know, feedback. Uh, you can say, hey, why aren't you doing this? Or you could go look at, you know, the other local person and say, hey, what about trying this? Because then you can see exactly how they're operating. It's still going to be very uh, edgy. Oh, very much so. We, <laughs> yeah. but I, I do think it is the future. I think it's a trend because just the benefits of those who do do it will be very useful. Yeah. will be great. So we're going to try and develop a bit of a platform sharing out our business and everything we yeah. do in ours. In that, that'll be we'll, interesting. We'll promote that in a little bit when it actually... <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, um, here's the thing they're basically saying is... um. So if, if everyone is sharing everything and anyone can kind of surveil anyone else... What will people do? Does that mean people just watch everyone not constantly, non stop? Right. And he, he's, he's thinking about this is that, well, probably not. You'll actually have a, a restructuring, a social kind of contract in a sense of restructuring, where people it's kind of like seeing in a restaurant, like you could listen into other people's conversations, but mm. why? Well, I mean, what benefit do you get out of it? And it's kind of, it's kind of not socially acceptable, it's not polite, right. okay. it's kind of rude. And so he's thinking that, um, in a, in a society where anyone can surveil anyone else and we've got complete open transparency, yeah. most of the time people will actually uh, will kind of reorder our society to actually work out, you know, from a bottom-up model, what we should be surveilling of others and what we shouldn't. Like, there'll be a level, okay. that, there'll be a line that people will draw automatically. Right. It's a bit like now how certain sharing certain things on the, on the web and sharing th certain things out are kind of like socially, you know, very not acceptable at all. Mm. And yet that's kind of slowly changing over time. But like urinating in public. You just don't yeah. share that. <laughs> well, even, he was even saying how celebrities have a certain... There's already this certain hierarchy of like, if you share out this information, you know, you shouldn't really be... If you're a celebrity and you like, there's paparazzi sharing everything, you know, they have a bit more leniency in terms of privacy compared to other people. Right. Like they won't get in trouble for saying something or rather that might get someone else in trouble who's yeah, not okay. a celebrity. Like there's already, he's pretty much saying there's already all these social contracts and kind of intricate mm -hmm. interlinkings between people perceives um, uh, data and privacy. Yeah. That in a world where everything is shared and everything is transparent, that it won't be this crazy thing where just everyone's watching everyone at any time. No. But at the same time, people will kind of operate and function in a way that they, they know they're being watched, but they won't really care. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, that's really cool. The, the thing before about like, reordering around, uh, say, like, it won't be right to actually look at something that some people have shared, I, I don't see that happening. Because, I mean, say, it, it might be more like Facebook. I mean, it's the best example that, sure, all of these photos are put up of, like, you know, like, my cousin Jamie's 20th wedding, or, I don't know, something, something silly like that. It's yeah. like, oh, cool pictures there, but it's just not interested. Like, I always know I could, but I'm never going to. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. That's another point you makes in there as well. It's like, yeah, people have profiles and share all this stuff online, but most of the time you're just not really that interested in it. Yeah, you're saying so it doesn't give a shit. <laughs> but see, that's already like a, a line drawn in terms of privacy. Yeah. Like you're not gonna, it's you know, it's there. It's so in a society where everything is open, you know, yeah, it's you there, know it's there, but, but you don't necessarily don't want to go and yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, I can agree. Nor with is that. it socially awesome. acceptable, nor do you care, nor do you. There's yeah. a whole bunch of factors that can come into play. Um, yeah, definitely go read this this interview because it's really long. Um, they have massive back and forth discussion. Cool. And that's pretty much all I can tap out of it for you for now, so... Fair enough. Go ahead, because we, we've got all, like, lots of uh, ideas and thoughts about this this whole area of just surveilling everything and life logging and then using all that information. We'll share as much as possible. Future us will look back on a on future civilization, he, future grandchildren will be like, oh my god, look at that. Look he didn't that. mention too much about, um, his idea is that the more we share, like an open surveillance type society would be completely free of any tyranny because no one would... Because everyone would be open and everyone would be transparent and no yeah. one could actually have control over anyone else. Cause... Except but then for the you, machines. But then you look at like what Facebook's doing now and it's kind of like... Yeah. Well, see, so that means if that's because Facebook isn't transparent. If everything was yeah. purely transparent, including all the businesses, then it could be kind of cool. Yeah, we should demand transparency from Facebook. Yeah, yeah I think it's a good thing. That would be interesting. <laughs> ah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just the beginning. Facebook's just the beginning. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and they are like, Woo! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hi, AI. 
is the bowl. Just find one, find ones that I haven't posted. <laughs> Fair enough. Hover, oh, oh, you, can't, you can't hover on the iPad. No, I can't. Oh yeah, no, there I can. Hold it down. Yay. Okay. Um, sounds good. Well, let's just go through and um, I don't know, just talk about some of these because I love some of the ideas that have actually come up from here. It's freaking crazy. You guys are insane. I love it. I'm gonna read the third one down. Okay, third one down. In the far future, matter and antimatter will become interchangeable and we'll be able to do everything we want. Gathering, creating, and saving information will probably become our main goal. Logic will become our default way to interact with each other without violence and irrational motives. The existence of multiple closed systems, i.e. individuals, might uh, might be a logical argument to improve our chances for survival. Now it's posted by Log Me in GBD. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so basically everyone operating and yeah talking with each other it's a, well i mean that, that is a trend that's actually going there i mean i can't disagree with that at all like i mean in the very far future i mean the ultimate trend is towards that there's no separation between you know kind of the machine and the biological thing there that it is a purely a purely logical i may disagree with that entirely just a, not entirely just a little bit being that um uh, the emotional response of any biological creatures would still have to be factored in because that's still a form of computation we right. can't discount that emotions are a form of computation in a weird way. It's a very yeah, probabilistic. Yeah, exactly. But it's still there's, it's still com logical. computation. Yeah, maybe on a default level. I I, I kind of agree more with this. I, in in the very far future, it's it's going to be that we're just going to be artisans living in a dream world, creating whatever we like. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. Do you want to read the next one? But why we wouldn't we do that in an art of, in a simulated world, not so much in a physical world. Hmm. Because, we, yeah, we test it in the simulated world, and then if it worked, we'd put it in the real world. The same way that we have thoughts in our minds, we test how the thoughts work, okay. and then we chuck it out. Yeah. Um, I like that. There's a lot of these in mine. Oh, okay. One. Oh, look, here we go. In the future, the human brain will be looked at, uh, looked on as an incredibly obsolete machine. That was by Giga. 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 G yeah, Giga. Very true. <laughs> I agree. I agree um, entirely. Um, oh, okay, I like this. I can't wait until we can act like we're in action movies. So this is by Ted Susan. In the future, from <laughs> yeah, from robotic suits or through virtual reality, you'll be able to act like people in action movies without getting hurt. Holy shit, that's been like a <laughs> dream of mine forever. And there's no reason like you can't do that. Imagine like, you know, Second Life, it was actually good. Like, uh, and surrogates. Surrogates, yeah. yeah surrogates movie. Well, the yeah. game art movie. I mean, they're not yeah, good yeah. movies, but I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool <laughs> idea. They're cruel and unusual, but... Yeah. Well, just going out there, I mean, I okay. can't. Everyone's like, you know, had mosquito. <laughs> Everyone's like, you know, had vertigo and stuff. Like, you know, going to the top of a tall building. It's like, ah, oh, it's just, just great to just do the, just swan dive to a type of death. That'd be just great. I'd love to do that. <laughs> what, when just, do you think this? Oh, I'd love to. Like, anytime you're jumping off a building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a giant cliff. I went to the Grand Canyon. The first thing was like, oh, fuck, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just all the tourists just watching it. You just run to a massive dive. Arms out, swan dive, like Tomb Raider style, right into the chasm. You do the uh, base jumping. Yeah! That'd be cool. <laughs> I'd love it. I can't wait to be able to do this. And I, I think this will happen within our lives. Without being purely, probably purely virtual, but still. Yeah. Just like Cats a, yeah, virtual reality that's kind of simulated directly into yeah. the... I can't wait for yeah. that. It'll be great. You also added there, uh, and if you should see iPads in thrift stores and think nothing of it. I agree. Same way that mobile phones. So this will be in the thrift store soon. This is going to be very obsolete very quickly. Mm. Um, um, go on to the next page. Okay. Oh, actually, just by doing that, we'll uh, learn more about the brain and know exactly how sentient animals are and if they are at all. I can't agree more with this. The the idea of um, I forget who it was, the Wolfram, Stephen Wolfram, in a, in a talk that he came up with, he was saying that one of the big trends that he'd like to start seeing is computers for pets, computers for animals. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a form of computation we haven't actually um tapped into yet. And they could be computing on a completely different level that we could yeah. actually tap into and utilize for our own benefit. Yeah. It's the same way of like, you know, the accelerator, like the lobsters. Yeah. Just getting all the animals to actually, you know, just get them to connect and talk. I still haven't read that book Cat. yet. You know, get all the cats to go together. It's very good. It's very cool. Yeah. I, 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 I really agree with that. I, I can't wait to actually see some pet computers. Um, Ooh, big war as well. I'm not, I'm still not sure if there's going to be a big war. I'm really hoping not. <laughs> I mean, but there's a but still Hugo, a good chance. Hugo could dig us. Yeah. I don't know. Hugo I, I, think, I think there'll be, you know, there'll, there'll be a good way to actually control what's being said and what's happening. Yeah. So maybe control, there will be Control wars. the message so you don't have to... Yeah, you don't have to do it. They're like, the wars will be kind of like, you know, an invisible war type thing fought in the shadows. Yeah. I love Deus Ex. 
Uh, you can buy a USB stick that will tell you your health given a drop of blood. Uh, saliva, urine, excrement. Why excrement? Why would you... <laughs> also, it can analyze your genome with a bit of hair or skin. It's uh, Geek 2045. Yeah, I agree with that. It's pretty cool. Maybe not a USB stick, though. Maybe just your phone or have it permanently connected. It doesn't have to be something you only oh, check yeah. now and then. Why not have but, it permanently there? Oh, true. But you wouldn't... With your genome, you wouldn't. Why not? You'd do it once, but it's stick sticking your mobile phone or computer that's attached to you. Okay. That's permanently there. It just constantly checks and then just, yeah. Oh, maybe check now and then. I doubt your genome changes that often. Mm. Does Detect it change at all? I don't know enough about it. Don't, unless you have horrible mutations. True. <laughs> Throw some radioactive, like, material at you. Ha <laughs> ha! You have to recalculate on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you burnt my skin! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry, it just went too far. Um, ooh, yeah, I like the uh, robotic birds with webcams, AI to it, that avoid things crashing due to bad navigation. We'll fly us showing anywhere we want, being remotely controlled from home. It'll be do like doing astral projection to any place. I agree entirely, except for the whole idea that it's birds. I think it'll just be like in the future Google Maps. I mean, they've already announced it. Is that you'll just be able to go to any place on the Earth in real time and see what's happening. Yeah, the uh, UAV thing. Mm. Or the, the quadcopter, which just mm. goes to where you want to go and you just hire it out. Yeah, and it can be tiny, 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 tiny. Well, actually, really interesting with um, Google Places. Uh, Google Places. Google Maps, um, they're actually saying that they'd like businesses now to actually start taking pictures of inside their house. And yeah, and then put a yeah. tour inside. Yeah. Exactly. I think that would be great. That'd be awesome. But it's definitely a trend, and I can't agree more with it, that we'll be able to go virtually to any place around and actually look and go from there. I mean, you, men you mentioned astral projection, but I think that's really just the beginning, because, I mean, we already have a form of astral projection. I remember I got had a few beers uh, one night, and I decided to go to the center of Paris, and then I just walked around in street view, just going and <laughs> explode. I was like, I'm in Paris now. <laughs> Even more, a lovely hat. It wasn't this one, but it was barrage. How cool would that be in a full room? I know. Oh, dome. man. You could do that now with Google Maps. Anyway, yeah. You don't have, like, a treadmill. that's just start walking. It loads up the new ones. What if there's any way to do that on the cheap? Like, you, like, have a blow-up thing where you just... We just, just get projectors. projectors. You know, projectors like, imagine, cheap. like, you get a, you get a blow-up balloon, you, like, blow it up with air, and then you just step inside it or something. Like really Why not just get a small room you? and you just have like a thing in the middle that just projects you want it up at the top? You want it like circular so you can kind of... Yeah. It's like all immersive and... True. Spherical. Should try that. That'd be fun. Anyway. Another one you found. Um, ah, this is good. The stock market will likely disappear soon because the barrier for use of learning algorithms is dropping and our computational power is increasing. By mm. Tim Kennan. Mm. That's so true. Like... Um, Pretty much most stock trading now is just done by computers in millisecond time, oh, right. and they're, they're they're very quickly pushing out all the human traders, stock traders, because mm. they can't compete with them. There's no way. I mean, even the fact that there was that story before saying that they're actually building like you know exchanges along the nodes, like you know halfway between London and England, because they get a millisecond advantage. a millisecond extra, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which can be like millions of dollars. Yeah, and so that means the computers are just going to route our resources for us. Yeah, it's like. If someone comes with a cool idea over in Australia, you're like, we'll just send you some resources, build it for us, sounds yeah, good. Sounds great. Someone comes with a cool idea over in Africa, boom, here's some resources, use this, mm. excellent, nice work. It'll be great. We'll, <laughs> we'll end up going to that kind of tipping point, um, excuse me, um, we'll end up going to that kind of point where the actual cost of getting resources, there's so much resources out there that it becomes a pain actually trying to allocate it, so it'll be kind of like just any idea, it's just like, just go for it, just go for it, just go for it. It'll, they'll just cross that threshold. Yeah. it. Yeah, it'll cross the threshold where it's just easier to give people resources to just do that idea rather than anything else. Mm. I'm sure you still may have a limit on like, you know, consumer spending and just for yourself, but if it's for a cool idea, it's just, just yeah. take. Yeah, have a There's have still a such a massive barrier to entry for any idea. Yeah. Turning an idea into something that, you know, practical, that turning into life is so ridiculously hard. It should not be yeah. that hard. Yeah, it's the least it's been in history. Just says True. how much it would have sucked back, back yeah. then. Oh my god, the, the book. You could do so much with books. I would love to be alive like, you know, when the printing press just started and started going out. The ideas that people would have had say, oh my god, we can share this bit of information and put this out and start recording this thing and all the different types of books that came up. You could. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this one you like. In the future, you will be able to TV your dreams. <laughs> I Tell can't you. wait to do yeah. that. Uh, here's a new person. Here we go. Well, let's just go for, say, maybe another three. Okay. I'm trying to find a new person. Oh, okay. Uh, what? Oh, here you go. Why not Chigo? Chigo's ones are good. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go another one from Tim Cannon. In the beginning, the Hive AI will be several AI brands competing. The Hive adapts to what it considers mistake behavior, fed by people's res retrospection from their own events, but also other people's perspective on what they should have done to correct it. 
Example, if you are gay and get gay bashed, the Christian hive AI might come up with, don't be queer. Whereas the AI from non-retards would say, avoid Christians. Oh, you champion! <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? That was Tim. Oh, nice. Oh, that is awesome. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure what I consider with the whole, like, you know, the different AI competing. I mean, I, I guess you've already got, like, you know, the hype ones now with, you know, the different forums and where people go together. So, I mean, I guess they are competing in that way, hey. Yeah. People kind of, like, just go to where they want and then there'll be the... See, there'll not probably be a connection type one. It, it may branch more than actually be competing, like, in separate camps. So, you say, like, there's just one universal way, like, I'm just going to use the current model right now, like, you know, like, Facebook is kind of, like, you know, the big one where everyone kind of mingles and gets all the stuff there. And then you've got, you know, the other islands, kind of, like, you know, LinkedIn and stuff, for personal stuff. Then you've got all the other, it starts branching down into the more specialized type of minds. So, they'll always compete going through there. But it'll all still be structured. Maybe. Structured competing hive minds. Yeah. Because there's still a structure emerging there. I think the way it's going to go, and with ideas we've been t- thinking about already, is like, it's going to be, Facebook shouldn't be something you have to actively think, I'm going to post something. No. It should just be automatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I agree. Automatically routed. So just everything about your life and everything you do and every piece of information you get should just be completely recorded. And then anyone should be able to access that. Yeah. Who has similar interests, similar tastes, similar... I, I, I agree entirely. I, so, like, so like when I say hive mind right now, that should instantly be recorded and someone else should be able to tap into what I'm saying right now anywhere else in the world if they're actually interested. listening to it, yeah. Like in some recommendation system so that, you know... Yeah, because fa- Facebook wouldn't be the right girl, girl, girl and like... Yeah, well I mean that, that was good if, if that's, that's what she was into. Yeah, that, yeah. But it, it'd have to be another system. Facebook wouldn't need to write culture no. for it. But another system has to start emerging that just records everything that you're doing and starts saying, hey, look, come and, me- come and measure exactly the word hive mind whenever it's being mentioned. And you can just start dropping in on people's conversations. Yeah. How cool. awesome would that be? <laughs> That'd be great. Hey, that's an easy product. Like, relatively. The, the, the high... <laughs> 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 the idea of recording everything that you're doing and then putting that all into one system... It's relatively easy. That that's not hard. Putting the algorithm on top to actually analyze the different words, but yeah. I don't see it as insurmountable. I think that's possible. I mean, even with a really crappy implementation, like you know, Google's one on YouTube and stuff. Um, I found one here. Look, in the future, there will be crowdsourcing clones that will vastly improve the business model and possibly make today's standard obsolete in some way. Holy shit! Oh, Hi guys. Boys. That's awesome. Isn't that essentially what we're just saying. Yeah, saying it before. Open that was source. February twenty first. That was Open three months ago. Business models. <laughs> what a champion. Which I mean, I guess that's been out in the ether for a while. It has. Um, I'm trying to find one. So to... well, we go to the last one. We'll do one more. The last one. I'm trying to find some new people. Okay. Well, there was hey guys. I don't, wanna, I don't want to keep repeating the same person's ideas. But they have such awesome names like Jigger, Giga. Giga. <laughs> oh, hang on. It's okay. Hey, let's t- okay. Um... <laughs> Well, I've got one here by Travis Thirdgill. Thirdgill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is about IBM's Watson. After seeing IBM Watson annihilate Jennings and Russell in Jeopardy last night, I thought about the future applications of it. Imagine a Watson-powered conversation assist mode application running in your AR heads-up display. During a conversation or debate with someone, subtitles appear in your HUD recommending possible responses based on factual data oh, and your that. personal preferences in real time. It's like... Conversation that, assist. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. That's an idea where if everyone would be running that same system. Yeah. And then who'd be debating them? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not really you debating someone. It's the no. computers debating each other. <laughs> the, com- the computers are telling you what to say next. And you're like, I want this <laughs> exactly. outcome. Like on your, on my heart, I'm like, I want this outcome. I want Tristan to believe what I'm saying is right. <laughs> and on your thing, you're like, I yeah, want that. things to be... I'm just and then right. it's the computers having a conversation saying, okay, how can we make these monkeys actually interact better? <laughs> And the computer oh. start having a conversation rather than it's like it's like a game of chess for the computer. Hey, yeah, they're just like, like say this monkey, like, do this. Hey monkey. Bob, what's what your human doing today? Oh. <laughs> Some shit, man. Yeah. I'm He's making it. I'm making it pick up waffles and shit, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, dude, watch it. I'm gonna make him slap himself in the head. <laughs> See, recommends it. What? Oh, I love it. It's that, that'd be funny if you could control that system as well. <laughs> you do a yeah. surrogate type thing or whatever, like where I control, <laughs> I control the computer controlling you. Yeah. Do, 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 love like you know hacking into that or something. You're just recommending horribleness. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be kissed. Go for it. But it's my mother. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
Oh, uh, dear. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> really? Of all examples, you choose. Of all one. examples. Okay. I think that'll do it. Yeah, nothing like a bit of incest around off the show. Yeah. That's pretty good. How long was this show? I think it was fairly long. <laughs> I think it was. Anyway, Sorry. Cheers for watching. Yeah. Um, we're going to start. I'm, I don't know. I was saying we're going to use Hive AM more, but it should come right now. We need more people to be posting. So go well, post, go post ideas. Well. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> and actually promote it. We haven't promoted this anywhere. Yeah. It's cool with the site, though. It's That's like a no, great site. It's nice and like simple. Mind. It's very nice. There's no other added crap. It's just like, mm. it's there. It's post your idea. It's good cool. fun. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, that's it for Oh, you want to say something? No. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, we didn't mention it before. Sure, I'll add it at the start. Um, Humanity Plus Conference. Oh um, my god, yes. We've been meaning to mention this for a long time. Um, good friend of ours runs it. Um, Humanity Plus Conference. I just want to find out the dates. It's called Adam Ford. Or Adam Falcon. There you go. Yeah, Adam Falcon. No, it's Adam Ford. Adam. I no, it's Adam it's Falcon, yeah. His alias is Adam Falcon. I think. He's cool. He, he organises the uh, Singularity mm, uh, Summit. She should come along to that too. In. This is only for Australia, unless you want to travel over. There's, you should travel over, it'll be fun. It's down in Melbourne. We won't be able to make this one, but the we're Humanity definitely going to go to the Singularity Oh, the Singularity one, one definitely, not the Humanity Plus one. Just because it's um, a pain. We're very poor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably shouldn't have bought this, but yeah. <laughs> but it's a fun toy. I know, it's um, So the Humanity Plus conference is this 25th of June. So it's just next month. It's just a month away now. Yay! Um, 25th to 26th of June. Tickets are free. Like, they don't cost a thing. Really and they've good. got some good speakers. The same people that were at, actually at the last um, Singularity Summit. Mm. So you've got... Oh, a few people. I, I a can't, few people. There's, they're weird names. I can't read them. I'll just read out the topics. Um, so rationalism, transhumanism, and singularity, logics, technology, and social control, evolutionary AI... Um, more human than human, the computation of moral reasoning. That sounds pretty cool. Oh, yeah. um, archi architecting the future, the ethics of boosting animals from sentience to self-aware consciousness, yeah. the plurality, where why everything is all over the place, the maker revolution, the internet of things, that'd be cool, mm. and open source biotech. Hells yeah. And go much, on. much more. Blah, 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 blah. And the Singularity Summit's on the 20th to the 21st of August, so that's Come not... Come along to that. That's not far along as well. Far It'll away as well. Also, I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Beanie McGee. Catch you later. Guys. Next week. <laughs> there you go. Do I need to do the intro? Oh wait, whose intro is it? God, you look like a...